it's good to see you all. Um, and thanks for coming. You are going to be talking about uh, Composer, which is our uh, sort of new image build toolkit thing. Um, yes, building OS images for any platform. Uh, I'm Will Woods. You may know me from my various cussing about packaging formats and sneaking hot dogs into the operating system. And Jen Giardino. I'm Jen Giardino, Senior Interaction Designer on the User Experience Design Team, and I work on Composer. So here we have Terry. He is a system cloud administrator, and he needs to quickly create customized OS images for different types of deployments. And we have Composer, which lets you build custom images for any platform. This is our sort of architecture overview. What, what is Composer? Well, yeah, it's a thing that lets you build stuff. You take content from various places, from Red Hat or Fedora or wherever, your own things, third parties, and run it through the Magic Composer box. And out comes the things that you would want to install or uh, run in various platforms. Hooray. Um, and yeah, it's not like we wrote all new stuff to do this as much as I may have wanted to. Uh, it's using all of the tools that you know and love, uh, Anaconda and Yum and DNF behind the scenes. We've just uh, given you new ways to use these things, made it a lot easier. <laughs> what it doesn't do. The main thing that we wanted to do here is make it easy to make ready to, ready to run, ready to deploy images. The parts where you sort of need to you know, do a lot of customization once the image is built. We're not doing all of that. We aren't going to do everything for you. Um, not because we don't love you. We do love you. It's just that there are certain things you can't do if you want to have a immutable image that you're going to deploy in a thousand places. We don't have a way of, com uh, of doing 1,000 configurations. We can't do. We can't predict everything you want to do. So we're going to give you the common tools to do the things that you will need to do. And there's lots of great con uh, configuration tools to set up your system once it's running. But Composer is concerned with getting the thing that you're going to run. Once it's running, that's good for other tools, not for us. So yeah, so, we're, so here, Jen's going to walk you through what it is and how it works. So Composer is a plugin inside of Cockpit. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Cockpit. It's a web console that lets you administer your system. So when you see Composer inside of Cockpit, it's labeled as Image Builder. And the main page of Image Builder Composer is a list of blueprints that are, represent the different images you maintain. Here we're going to go to uh, this HTTP server blueprint where you can see these are the contents that I've already added to this blueprint. And I want to make some changes to the blueprint. Um, one of the things I want to do is get rid of PHP. So I'm going to go ahead and remove <laughs> that one. We're making some very smart moves for, for, for Terry. That's a demo. Terry has decided that he does not want to use PHP anymore. Good job, Terry. <laughs> yes, Terry's, Terry's going to add Node.js to his blueprint. Um, so I filtered it. I found things related to Node.js here. I've added it to my blueprint. Um, I can see Node.js here, but um, there's also a tab of dependencies. So just to see if Node.js also brings in NPM, I can filter by NPM, and I see that it is, in fact, in my blueprint. Um, pulled in automatically as a dependency. Terry is much relieved to know that he has NPM now. So um, that's it for the changes I'm going to make to my blueprint. I can see the changes that I've made. Um, the ones listed down here, uh, so I added rsync earlier, but I never saved that. That was part of a previous session. Um, these are the changes that you saw me make now. I'm going to go ahead and commit all of them. Um, if I want it, I could roll back some of those changes and undo them. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and commit the ones that I just created. And if the idea of committing changes sounds familiar to, me, to you, yes, this is behind the scenes keeping the blueprints in a little Git repository. So 
So this blueprint now is something that I'm ready to, um, to start using. I click Create Image, and here you can see a variety of choices available to you for creating an image. And yeah, we have all the, you know, all your favorites of all of the image types that you might want to build. Um, two different flavors of QCOW2, uh, you know, tar archives if you just like want to, I don't know, cram that into some dockery sort of thing. Um, we can probably add more, but these are the most common things out in the world, so. And if you're looking at that and being like, oh, but my favorite isn't in there, please do come talk to us about it. So yeah, Terry, Terry loves QCOW2, so he's gonna create a uh, QCOW2. And when you create images, you um, would then go back to this, this sort of overview page for your blueprint, um, where you can see all of your components as well as the, the images that you've created. So this is the one that I just selected. Um, it it's kicks off that process. And then this is one that I had previously created, the VNDK. Um, so, we're kind of doing it like a cooking show and sort of pulling the, pulling it out of the oven to show you. And it works but while it's still baking. The network being what it is right now, we're not 100% certain that it'll be able to fetch stuff in time for you to see what's going on. So. Uh, yes, we will. Uh, yeah, there are ways to specify that. Um, we'll show some details of the blueprints in a little bit. Um, I don't think we have stuff for that in the UI yet but I think we're actively working on it. But I, I do have some activities at the UXD booth. I'll be here tomorrow and Sunday, and if you have feedback and would love to come and take a look, I would love for you to come and take a look and just walk through some of, the, some of those activities and provide feedback. Yeah, the UX team is actively trying to design a really good interface for how you find those things and make those sorts of changes, so please do come talk to them. Okay, right. so yeah, just to sort of prove the point, we're going to you know, take the image that we built earlier and download it earlier and... Uh -oh. oh no. I'll just Virtual Box is very clever, and if you type Lin, it, it says, oh, you're doing Linux. And if you type Machine, it sees the MAC and thinks you're running a Mac. And <laughs> good job, Virtual Box. But yeah, so... You so, know, oh, I forgot to show you. Um, yeah, so I had already downloaded this one that I created earlier. So I, I have that file available. And then when I'm creating this VM, um, you can see it's here. And I can select that, creating that VM. Hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, name it something other than Linny. <laughs> yeah, oh. Linny 2, the relineing. Linny Harder. <laughs> I'll go with Linny too. Yeah. So yeah, here we go. It's gonna boot, and you all know what a boot sequence looks like. It's not super exciting. Um, we can, if you wanna switch over to the console for a second, we might be able to, do we wanna risk um, so there is a full CLI to control this as well, which we would love to demonstrate, but unfortunately, the network being what it is, sometimes the CLI hangs. We, but we'll show you some of that in a little bit. So yeah, there we go. This is the image that we built. Um, it works, and you boot straight into it. And I don't think this one actually has NPM in it, sadly, because we can't get it, because the network here is being very strange. So, CLI? Are we, are we gonna try it? All right, well, well yeah. Let's, let's do the help one first. Yeah. So we've got, we'll just bring up the help screen just to let you know. Like, it's got a bunch of you, your usual sort of thing and verb type commands to tell it what sort of stuff you want to do. Um, and there's nice tab completion, so if you're not sure what the name of the blueprint or uh, the compose UUIDs are very long, so it'll help you out. And we'll see if we can get status. Oh, we can, hooray. So it's still running the build for OpenStack, but it shows you all of the builds that you are, have either finished or failed or running or pending. Yeah, and there's other commands, but you don't really wanna watch us type. That's not great. Um, so just 
I'm going to go back and do a reminder. Some of you weren't in the room when the screen was showing. Uh, we do have a few questions. We wanted to get some feedback from you guys on. Um, if you could, if you haven't already pulled up the survey, if you could pull it up and just a few questions, answer those, and then in a few minutes, we'll pull up those results. At the very least, we're pretty sure that T-Money, Terry, our boy, will answer these questions. So if nobody else answers, we're just going to talk about what Terry wants to do. And I love Terry, but not that much. So yeah, um, in order to make the image, um, when we build an image out of these things, normally when you make an image run through the installer, you have to create your uh, user account, set the root password, things like that. Um, so we did that through the console when we were building this thing earlier. So you know, this is just, we can list the blueprints that are on the server, um, save a copy of the example HTTP server, which we showed you. And so uh, you want to go to the next one. So yeah, here's what the blueprint looks like. It's not unexpected, and you can set the exact version numbers. And we've got, we've got modules, we've got packages. You can list what you need in there. Um, and so it's got a list of the things that we added in the UI. Not all of the dependencies, but that comes later. And so in order to, you know, we can add a, we added a root user, or add a, set a password and a key for, for Terry, T-Money, and just put his key in there so that T-Money can get into his systems. Uh, so we've got the root one, we've got a, a user, so that you've got a regular user on the system, and you know, these are the sorts of things you expect. These are the only, there will be UI for this soon, there isn't right now. Um, we're trying to figure out what sorts of customizations are the most important, and those were the most obvious ones, so we started there. And so really it's just a matter of taking those little snippets, adding them to the, to the blueprint, and then pushing the blueprint back into the server, and running that command. And that was how we built the thing that we just built, or just booted. Like, that's all it took. So yeah, there are, like I was saying, there are other ways you, would, you might want to configure your systems other than installing RPMs, creating users, and giving them keys and things like that. There's all sorts of great tools. There's a, Kickstart gives you a lot of options for you know, turning services on and off and, and doing all sorts of things. Um, Ansible is magic and lets you do pretty much anything. And then the, a lot of environments use things like Cloudinit or Ignition or what have you to, when the image boots up, figure out where it is and configure itself accordingly. Um, we do not have, we don't have, uh, there's some of these things that we can't necessarily do. We want, you use, we want you to use those tools to do that stuff. Composer isn't going to handle everything that these things do, because those are great tools and we don't want to reinvent them. Um, we wanted to give you the parts where you get to build the image and then use the existing tools to do what you need to do. Um, so we want to know what sorts of things you're doing with the systems once you've, you know, other than put a bunch of RPMs together, add a user, and go to town. Um, because we don't know what everybody does with their systems, and we need to hear from you. That's why we have the survey, and that's what we're asking. So. So do we have results? Do we? I don't know. Is Sarah in the room? Sarah, Hi. yay. So should I just reload it? Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, this is in Fedora, or it's in a copper in Fedora 29. You can install it and play with it right now. Um, it's also uh, in rel uh, numbers. Uh, am I allowed to talk about rel numbers? 7.6 and 8.0. It is, okay. <laughs> There's a number after 7? We're allowed to talk about that again? Um, I have a sticker. <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm told that this is available for, for rel, and it's in Fedora. Uh, so, does the number two mean two people? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we had what, like, seven people answered the survey, which is, which was nice of those seven people. Thank you, seven the people. <laughs> um, so, so it's hard to compare other to Ansible, but two people chose Ansible over. Other, I mean, the other ones, not other. Um, does anyone want to talk about Ansible at all? Yeah, as are, far are there as things that we were missing that you're like, oh, I can't believe you forgot about my favorite tool slash image slash whatever. Anybody want to talk about their stuff or no? Chef. Chef? Chef. I don't know anything about Chef. <laughs> No, 
What you use, you use Chef in, to make images? Yeah. That's a thing it does? Yeah. Neat. We will do some research on that. Okay. Yeah. So it's if you're if you're creating an image, sort of while you're creating the image, you do some some chefy stuff in the image, and then you're done with it. Exactly. Right. So yeah, um, we're we're trying to work on sort of a mental model of like you make an image, and the image is is not mutable while it's being built. Um, like an image, you you say what you want to, what kind of an image you want, and the image appears. The idea that like while it's being built, you can kind of stick your hand in the machine and tweak some things. We would like it a lot better if you did that afterward. There's some interesting technical reasons for that. If you want to come talk to me about them, I will talk your ear off. Um, you probably don't want to hear about it, but uh, there's some very good reasons why that's a, a really good way to build images. Um. All right. Okay. Everyone loves Kickstart. Hooray. I love Kickstart, too. Um. As, can we get a raise of hands, like, just from the whole audience of, like, is Kickstart your first prefer preferred tooling? Could you raise your hand? Yay. OK. All right. Good to know. <laughs> and then second preference would be Ansible. All right. Um, where are the Ansible people in the audience? Yeah, as far who as loves Ansible? Preference? Show me. OK, cool. Thank you for showing <laughs> love to the Red Hat native product. We love you back. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> cloud in it. A little love for cloud in it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be mean. <laughs> all right. So yeah, like I said, you can play with this now. Um, so yeah, I, I guess one of the things that we're going to start looking at because we're well, uh, part of this was figuring out. Okay, we can build images. Then what? And so if I'm understanding what we're getting from the survey, and you're raising your hand, we should start looking at the things that are in Kickstart files, the directives that are in there. Is it, all right, everybody who loves Kickstarts, are you thinking about the like, commands that are in Kickstarts or the postscripts? Um, if you're like, uh, raise your hand if you're like, I need my postscripts or else this doesn't work for me. We've oh. Got a guy over there. Okay. I'm so gonna go there. But, and then everybody else is pretty happy with the way that you can configure the images with the stuff that's just the commands Kickstart provides. Yeah? Can I wave at me? If you, if you, all right, cool. Everybody loves Kickstart. Everything is fine. Nothing is ruined. <laughs> I told you guys. <laughs> this is yeah. So Composer is is a pretty new, or it's not pretty new. It's it's a it's a new way of looking at the old tools that we had, and we're trying to really do uh, the best we can to design something that really like works for you and make your life makes your lives easier and better in whatever small way we can. So. Getting this sort of information from you isn't just like, oh, thanks for telling us we're great. It's we want to make this good for y'all. So that's why we're asking these weird questions. So thanks for indulging us. So yeah, uh, if you want to come talk more about it, um, the code is the code for uh, the cockpit plugin and the back end. The, it's part of Lorax and Welder Web. Um, that's email, and if you want to come contact me directly. Yeah, and then a UXD booth is, has been in that far, the end of the hall that way. Um, so you can come find me or Sarah, who's also in the audience. Um, and we would love to get your feedback on different aspects of this tool. And so please come see us um, this afternoon or tomorrow or Sunday. It would be much appreciated. Thank you. Right. Thanks very much. Do we have any questions? Did, yeah, did anyone have a question or things they wanted to tell us we forgot about? Josh. Um, I have two questions. Two questions, all right. So when you say OS images, is it explicitly for virtual machines or I will. So the question was, uh, when we're talking about OS images, are we talking specifically about virtualization images or also containers? And one of the output formats is tar, which was our sort of easiest way of being like, you could cram this into Docker if you wanted to. Um, we weren't focused on creating uh, container images at, um, in our first sort of evolution of this. We wanted to start with the things that we knew at the time. But yeah, that's, that's a, a, a thing that we are thinking about, but not our main goal, as I understand it right now. And second question.
that's <laughs> so the question was about whether when you we want the images to be immutable and if you build it one day and then build it again six months later are you going to get the same content or are you going to get different content um, the intent the way that we have structured the um, the blueprint file I, I it's supposed to be the case that you'll get the same thing if you build it again two months later um, assuming that the content is still there which is, of course, kind of tricky, because if you're building against Fedora, you might have had an update that's no longer there. And that's part of a larger problem with the sort of ecosystem that we really all need to have a long conversation about. But the intent is um, the blueprint, once created, is, is like a static manifest of, here's what I wanted in this image. Don't change it unless I say so. That's why we're so careful about um, reviewing and committing changes. We want it to be very carefully changed. Does that answer the question? Okay. Well, or do you like? Do you have a preference in that workflow? Would you want it to remain the same, or do you want it to automatically update as your contents get updated? Yeah. What's the is the expectation? If you if you built an image today and then you tried to build it again six months later, would you expect that it would be built with updates, or would you expect it would build the same thing? That's the, in the intent is, uh, as you described, that we would, we'd like it to be that it's reliable, that what we built is, what you built is specifically going to be the same thing if you build it again, you know, in a different form six months later, that we'll freeze the content and build it again, and it doesn't change unless you want it to change, which is sort of a shift in thinking away from the way that the um, ecosystem works right now, so it's a challenge. Yeah? Do you have to have cockpit running? No, um, you can just run the uh, the cockpit or the the composer server and use the CLI. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah the, the comment was... That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the comment was, uh, for, the, for the microphone, uh, the comment was that uh, he, he would expect that, um, I, and I'm hoping I understand you, so you'd expect that the, there'd be a checkbox or something that would let you know that um, either you can say, I would like this to update as time goes on, or I would like this to stay at exactly the version I chose. And both you need or want both of those options to be available to you in some form. So you would want to know specifically when you've created images, what version of the package was in each image you created? Well, I can see in the background. I don't, so, well, it's nice to say like too slowly, but uh, for, for this purpose, it would be okay if it stays in the background. And I just can say, well, do it again. With maybe that modification, the rest, do it again. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, we have yeah, time for one last question, if there, are, if there is one last question. Tea money, you got any burning questions? Oh. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, I'm going to answer those backwards. The, the second question was, uh, is there any plan to have it um, be able to upload the images to you know, wherever uh, you need it to go? Um, we're trying, or at this point, that's out of scope for us because there are so many places to put the images, so we're trying not to um, get ahead of ourselves and do that. Um, and there are other tools to do the things. Um, and the first question was, um, oh, uh, rel entitlement, things like that. How do you get the, that sort of um, stuff set up? Um, and this just, okay, there we go. And uh, I'm going to defer to somebody else on that one, because I, <laughs> I, do not, I do not want to know. Thank you. Thank you.